It's round one of the Burson's Top Fuel Australia Nitro Bike Series starting here in Sydney. The Top Fuel dragsters might only run to the 1,000 foot, but the Nitro Bikes don't hold back, running the full 1320 quarter mile. Like all good stories, so as not to keep you in suspense, I'm going to start with the ending. First round of the series, and you come away with a win. Didn't look like it this morning. Never but, give uh, up. No. I've been, been in that position many times, a lot worse than that actually. We've actually crashed here and done all nighters to fix the bike to race the next day. So yeah. it could be a lot worse. It's a challenge. You know, you look at Johnny Zara in the same chair in our pit. Mm. He started it yesterday morning and blew the motor up. Mm. You know, first start, blew the motor, putting the next one in and then had problems with it. You know, persevered all day. Mm. If you give up, you don't get anything done. No. I nearly beat you in the first round. We did. For the first couple of siders, he went past me. Yeah. Um, Bastard. Yeah. All right, now you've heard the happy ending. Let's see how we got there. It was not easy. The bike is featuring a new fuel tech ignition, which Chris says is making more power. The weather has been a bit iffy leading up to qualifying, with rain on and off, and fair to say nobody's been on their bike for quite a while, so everyone's just finding their feet. Chris, of course, has his mind set on winning an eighth championship, and the best way to blow out the cobwebs and to send a clear message to the field is to lay down some solid qualifying passes straight out of the trailer. It's not to be, though. A bit of a technical issue, let's say, in first qualifying, and the bike just won't get up on the tyre. But they know what the problem is, and it's quickly fixed. But then the rain came, so that was the end of a fairly ordinary Friday. It's Saturday morning, though, and the sun's out. Quali 2. The bike puts down the power this time, but it wants to turn right towards the Wetherill Park Waste Disposal Facility, which is bad. Okay, qualifying session number two. So no representative time. Yeah, and unfortunately an aborted run on both sides of the racetrack there. And in qualifying three, nobody improved. The only decent runs were Rob Kassar with a solid 7.09 on his nitrous Kawasaki and Danny Rickard having his first run on the Brass Bulls Harley with an 8.11. Things will have to step up a bit if you're going to win. So the excitement's still there when you get on it then? Oh yeah, yeah, well, when I get on it at the line and the, the guys start it while I'm lying on it, you know, all the pain that you have sitting here talking to you, I'm in a lot of pain from age and injuries over the years. When I go up there and they start it, you're 18 again, you've got no pain. You're only thinking about what's about to happen and what your job is. There's no, that's euphoric. So now we have three rounds of racing. It's not elimination, so all the bikes do all three rounds. The winners of round one and two with the fastest times will go into the final. Round one and Chris is up against Danny Rickard, who will prove to be a fast learner on his Harley. Six double zero last time out on this motorcycle, and he'll be hoping that the next pass comes up with something starting with a five. He'll be taking on Danny Rickard from Old Narralunga in South Australia on let's face it, what is a bit of a David and Goliath matchup. This bike's in presage, set for a start. Once again, it's a bit messy, with the bike showing disturbing right-wing tendencies. It was a lot closer than what we probably thought it was going to be. A 767, 144 miles per hour. Matho really had to ride that one. It was out of the groove, it was over near the wall. You could hear him rolling in and out of the throttle. In the next lineup, Lockie Island's bike is refusing to play nicely, and so he doesn't start. So it's effectively a solo run for John Zara. John's 753 is still well below what he's capable of, but it's still quicker than Chris's 7.67 at the end of round one. You can see, even though he's off it so early, it still rolls across the line for a 7.53. But the money man is smoking Rob Kassar, who runs another 7.0, with a PB this time. He's run up at the start line, so to speak. This is on a pretty clean pass, all things considered. A 7.03, that's another PB for him. 
196 mph. Chris has another objective this year, the elusive sub six second pass, which he's been chasing for a decade. He has reset the Australian record many times, and now it's 6.007. Right now though, with nobody running even a sub seven all weekend, that doesn't look likely. So it's round two, and right now we need a solid low six. It's Chris versus John. Once again, and Chris Batson. Batson and John Zara, the two. Front runners in the race for the five second pass, the first five second pass in Australian history. Here we go, head to head this time around. And all things being equal, this is a pretty good mouth watering matchup, Matty. John Zara hopefully doesn't hold him up too much here. Both bikes just sort of babying themselves through the front half. Chris Matheson on a good run. What's the number? A 6.51, just over 199 miles per hour. Got a little bit excited there. It looked like it was on a decent run, but it was a little bit lazy on the front half of the racetrack. 1.18 to the 60-foot time. Here you can see them both in there. The head comes out of the side for Matho. Zara there has to un get off the throttle though and try and twist it back on. It's later in the run though we see Chris Matheson really wind that throttle in. It's incredible to watch the body language on these motorcycles. You can see really well in the head-on shot there. Chris Matheson really just throwing his body around. It's, it's very nuanced kind of changes that he's making in his body uh, language and the, the, the weight balance that he's shifting around. And so we get to the final round. Chris makes the final with his solid 6.51. And Rob Kassar has been consistent 7 zeros all weekend. This should be exciting. But first up, John Zara has to try to get a clean run in the race off for third place against Danny Ricard. Two people power to get that back, so horsepower to keep on top of that and keep the, get the momentum up from that standstill start. Ricard there, hits him all the tyre. It was pretty clean for John Zara. He has a couple of stabs at it. It's not to be though, another untidy pass and the man with brass balls runs a solid 7.8 to win the B final. And so we come to the A final. If Chris is going to win this, he knows he's going to have to put down a solid 6 second pass. Rob Kassar has not gone slower than 7.0 all weekend. The slightest glitch and it'll be all over. To some people, second place is a silver medal, but in drag racing nobody likes to lose and second place could be thought of as just the first loser. And as much as he accepts defeat when it happens, and he's the first to congratulate the winner, Chris doesn't like losing. He's been almost 400 kilometers an hour on this bike, Chris Matheson. Can he do it? Or will it be Rob Kassar continuing this fantastic streak that he's had? He's been super consistent all day. He deserves the win on paper. Despite Matho getting the win, he hasn't made it down the track under full power. The candles are lit. Matho's underway. Oh, no, he's on, he's on it again. And he gets there first to 671, 183 miles per hour. Rob Kassar was right there with a 705. 299 k's now, almost on the 300 km an hour mark. Just kicked the tyre loose about 100 metres out off the start line. Let's have a look at the replay. Round about there, you can see the back of the bike start to move around. He rolls off, gets back on. And was that a flash of flame out the front of the bike? I didn't see that. It's still going on at the back, though. It's still making a little bit of power further on, but maybe it's breaking down. You can see the candles lit. All of a sudden, they go out. The bike gets out of shape, like you say. Back onto it, and then you can just see... Is that a reflection, maybe? I think that's yeah, a reflection, think reflection off the side. But he keeps on. He wants the win. He absolutely wants the win. Absolutely, he wants the win, and there are plenty of other races that want the win. Chad Nalon, I'm sure, is down there with one of them. So that's round one. Next round is down at Mildura in a couple of weeks' time. Never been there. Don't even know what distance they're running. One-eighth mile, thousand feet, quarter mile. We'll find out when we get there. You still ran a quarter mile in 6.51 seconds today. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, still, it's still good, yeah. but it's... Uh, it's good, but it's... Yeah. We, could do, we could do better. 
you got to do rounds in race. If you don't do the rounds, you're not there in the final. Good work, mate. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Go and help the team. Don't let them do all the work. Come on, oh. bugger off. Come on. Thanks, Stu. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the Nitro Voodoo YouTube channel and we'll post an update after each round. See you then.